here with Crafting Cousins. Welcome to our channel. Don't forget to like and subscribe. We have three all new red, white, and blue projects just for you. Hey y'all, this is Kay. For this project, I'm going to be using this cutout of the United States. I got mine at Ollie's for $2. It originally sold at Target for $5. I'm going to be using these ribbons that I got from Michaels. They come in this huge pack of cut ribbons. So they have all shades of red, white, and blue. And I also have this one spool of ribbon from Michaels. One wooden star, I got this package at Hobby Lobby for $1.99. And they have three different sizes, 12 stars. A rub on transfer from the Dollar Tree. And finally, I need some paint and some hot glue. I'm going to be using Imperial Red, Nautical Blue, and White by Waverly. I'm going to be using quite a bit of paint on this piece. I come in first of all with the White Waverly chalk paint, and I'm going to paint around all of those edges of the frame, if you will, on the top. I used a flat stubby brush, which made it really easy. And then for the outside of the frame, I'm going to paint that also in the white Waverly chalk paint. Later, I thought I should have stained it. That would have been a look that gave it a little more depth on that frame. But hindsight, y'all, I didn't do that. I painted mine in white. So you might want to stain yours. It may be hard to tell on camera, but I drew off a rectangle on the upper left-hand corner for the blue field. And then I took my ruler and I used it to draw lines that were an inch apart all the way down the piece. And before I start painting, I'm going to use a little masking tape around the lines at the upper left. And I'm going to be using chalk paint in the color nautical blue and paint the little field of blue here at the top. It only took one coat for really good coverage. Once the blue was dry, I came in with some masking tape and I'm taped off those areas that are going to be in red and I'm going to paint the white stripes in between. Because I used a small paintbrush and the tape, this was a very quick process. If you wanted sort of an antique look, you could just leave the stripes in between the white unpainted. But I'm using bright colors, so I went in once the white paint was dry and I re-taped my piece and I'm coming in with kind of a small brush and I'm going to paint in every other stripe in the red, which is called Imperial. This is what it looks like so far. Now the only thing left to paint is our star and I'm going to paint the front and the edges in the white Waverly chalk paint. All of these pieces of ribbon were just a little over eight inches long. And so I'm going to take them and glue them end to end to make loops. I ended up with 10 different pieces. Then I take all of the loops and I place some glue right on top of where the glue was where I put them together and I just make bows, if you will. So I'm making sure that the glue is always stacked on top of each other. And the next thing I'm going to do is start stacking those bows one on top of another across from each other. And I'm making kind of a rosette. So I just place one drop of glue in the center and then place on the next ribbon, spreading them out as evenly as possible. Then I turn it over onto the back and I'm going to glue on seven strips of ribbon to be the ribbon tails. And then I'll turn it back over to the front and I'm going to place our wooden painted star right in the center of the rosette. Now I'm going to cut out the word America and those stars at the bottom on our rub on transfer. But before I place it on, I'm going to put on the rosette. I'm just going to use hot glue and place it here on the field of blue. And I also want to trim up all of those ribbon tails. They were just a little long and I wanted to cut them at an angle. Then we'll just peel off the backing from the rub on transfer, place it down where you want it. I'm placing it mostly on this red stripe. And then once you do that, you want to rub it with something. I'm using a popsicle stick. Make sure that everything has been transferred to the red. And then, and then when we peel it off, you can see how good it looks. And I liked it so well, I decided I would add on this American Eagle as well. I'm going to place it above America towards the end of the word. And of course, I'm going to use my popsicle stick and burnish it down onto everything. Make sure all of those little details come out before you lift it all the way up. And with that, the project is complete. Hey friends, thanks for stopping by. 
Don't miss our latest videos every Wednesday and Sunday at 7 p.m. Hey y'all, this is Kay. For this project, I'm going to be using these cute boxes that I got at the Dollar Tree. They have a file label on the top where you could place in some kind of labeling system. I'm not really sure what they were sold for, but of course we're going to be crafting with them. And just to let you know, the size is about six inches by six inches. I'm going to be using these two pieces of scrapbook paper. They originally came from Hobby Lobby some Waverly chalk paint in the colors white, and some folk art chalk paint in the colors imperial and nautical. To embellish the pieces, I'm going to be using some things from my stash. I had these left over styrofoam uh, firecrackers and also these little twisty things. Those all originally came from Hobby Lobby. And then I have a set of curls that I had made for a wreath before using the five and a half inch mesh, just cutting it in 10 inch pieces and rolling them up. And then you have them secured in the middle with half of a pipe cleaner. So I'm going to use all of these embellishments on our project. And the last thing we're going to use is Mod Podge and hot glue. So the first part of this project is going to be quite a bit of painting. I'm going to go in with the first box and I'm going to paint the backdrop and the inside of the frame, because this is basically a frame for me, and paint it with the white Waverly chalk paint. This did take two coats. For the second box, I'm going to use this nautical blue and I'm going to paint the inside, the inside of the frame, and the entire outside, all of it with the blue. And it only took one really good coat. Once the white paint was dry, I'm coming in with a smaller brush and I'm going to paint that outer edge of the front in the imperial red. And I also paint all of the outside as well. I just paint y'all on these boxes right over those little label holders because we're going to be covering those up later anyway. So the hardest part of this project is actually cutting the paper to fit the inside square. I cut mine on my cutter. I wanted to make sure for the red and white also that I cut it where it would have red at the top and red at the bottom. So I watched my measurements carefully. And also you want to place it where it is going to be horizontal stripes with the little tab to put labels in on top. You'll see that in just a moment when I turn it over. Here we have the tab on top. And then for the second one, yes, I did pour out way too much Mod Podge, so I had to put some of it back in the jar, but eventually I get that even coat that I need, and we'll just smooth it down into the box, and we want to get rid of as many wrinkles as possible. So I really did massage that in. It's kind of hard to get a brayer in there because it's so small, the area that you're working with. I am keeping my boxes nice and bright. I am not distressing them. That is just my personal preference on this project. And now just to embellish them, I'm going to keep it really simple. I'm going to first of all attach those little poofs of mesh, five and a half inch mesh, right to the top. Just slide it in those labels on the top and twist it in and hide the chenille stem. That's all there is to that part. The blue curl things are wired, so it's real easy to stretch them out in the center and flatten it so that you can place some hot glue over that chenille stem and then place them down onto your poof. For the rocket and the firecracker, they were just way too long on the end for the piece, so I just cut them off a couple, maybe three inches long, and then I just take hot glue and place those down on top of the curls onto the embellishment. Because the boxes are two inches deep, they don't turn over at all, and they make excellent shelf sitters. I do love how they turned out. Welcome aboard the Crafty Cruise Getaway, where creativity sets sail once again. Join us on Royal Caribbean's Mariner of the Seas, sailing out of the port of Galveston, Texas. Prepare to be dazzled as we stop in Costa Maya and in Cozumel. Just like our maiden voyage, we will host exclusive crafting workshops on sea days. We have some amazing projects lined up for you that guarantee something for everyone to enjoy. For the Crafty Cruise Getaway 2025, we're introducing our newest sponsor, We Create. Elevate your crafting with the state-of-the-art laser engraver and cutter, valued at over $1,500. We are thrilled to give away one of these amazing lasers as a door prize to one lucky participant. 
Mark your calendars for February 17th through the 22nd and join us on the Crafty Cruise Getaway for creativity, relaxation, and lasting memories. To book your spot, visit www.craftycruisegetaway.com. See you on board in 2025. Hey y'all, this is Kay. For this project, I'm going to be using one of these 14 inch wreath forms that I got from the Dollar Tree, $1.25. I'm going to be using some red 10 inch mesh that I got from Hobby Lobby. I got it at Christmas, but they sell the same one year round, just a different package. And then I'm also going to be using this blue 10 inch mesh that I got from Hobby Lobby. This is a leftover remnant, but it's perfect for this piece. If you buy two rolls, you can make two wreaths this way. I have two wired ribbons that I'm going to be using to make a bow. One is two and a half inches wide. It came from craftoutlet.com. The second one is one and a half inches wide. It came from Hobby Lobby. I'm going to be using one of these metal gnomes. It came on a garden stake from the Dollar Tree for $1.25. I'm also going to be using this sign on the wreath. It says proud to be a military family. It was marked 75% off last year. I will be using several white chenille stems. I also need some zip ties and some cable tie mounts. The cable tie mounts work perfectly with chenille stems to mount things to your wreath. The first thing we're going to do is set up this wreath form and I'm going to first of all be using those two inner rings and I'm going to be placing a chenille stem right in the middle around two of them. Six on this inner two rings. We'll come under the wreath form and then we'll twist our chenille stem a couple of times really tightly. Now we just have to repeat this process five more times on the inside. Notice that I'm placing these halfway between those vertical support posts. Now we'll start working with those outer two rings and we're going to place two chenille stems in each section and we will place them halfway between where we put the first one and that support post. My fingers are indicating exactly where you're going to place the chenille stems in each section. And once again, we're just going to come under that wreath form, the outer two rings, about halfway on that chenille stem, and give it two hard twists, and we'll have two on this first section. And each time you want to make sure that you place it halfway between where you place the original chenille stem in that section and that support bar. And now I'm just going to speed up the video even more. You just want to go around and finish those last five sections. This will give you 12 chenille stems on this outer ring for a total of 18 chenille stems on this wreath form. Now, I'm not telling you that this is the only way to set up a wreath form. There are many methods out there on the internet. This is the way I was taught and it's my preferred method. Setting up your own wreath form saves a lot of money than using the wreath forms that come with the chenille stems already on them. Now we need to start attaching the mesh to the wreath form. I'm going to come down, oh, about four inches from the end and gather it nicely in my hand, keeping it as even as possible. And then I bring it down to the wreath form as close to one of the inner rings of chenille stems. When I have chosen the one I want to start with, then I'm going to come in with a zip tie and I'm going to place it across one of those rings, not two like I do the chenille stems, and I'm going to tighten it down tightly and cut off the excess. And by doing this, we'll make sure that that mesh is attached tightly from the beginning. You could start in your chenille stems. I just prefer to have the extra protection of a zip tie. You need some way to measure your mesh. I like to have my cutting mat out and I'm going to be doing 10 inch loops on this entire piece. It's easy to remember 10 inch mesh and 10 inch loops. Once you have your 10 inch poof, you're just going to come over to the next set of chenille stems on the inner rings and tighten that chenille stem a couple of times around your mesh. And you want to fluff it as you go. Here you can see I'm working on my second poof. Again, 10 inch mesh, bring it over to the next set of chenille stems, tighten it down really well, and then fluff it before you move on to the last four on the inner rings. Now I'm going to speed up this process even more, and you're just doing the same thing. You're coming over 10 inches on your mat, measuring it, and then placing it into the next set of chenille stems and working your way around that inner wreath form. 
If your chenille stems start to slide around and not stay in place where you want them, sometimes the cheaper ones will, that's okay. Just turn it on the back, use a little hot glue, and attach it down to that wreath form, and you will stop that from sliding. Now that we finished those six, we need to move down to the outer set of chenille stems on the outer two rings and move it as close to a set of chenille stems. I just moved to the right a little bit. Then I'm going to come in with another zip tie and place it really close to that set of chenille stems and snug it tight and cut off the excess with wire cutters. And with that, we're ready to start on this outer set of 12 poofs. Now I'm starting on the outer set of chenille stems and good news, same procedure, gonna do the same thing, 10 inch poofs, and we're just going to speed around this wreath form. I think the most important things to remember are to measure accurately and to poof as you go. Also for beginners or people who are intimidated with using deco mesh, this is the absolutely easiest method to use and it's no fray. All of the frays are going to be hidden. Now that we have made it around the wreath form, I'm finished with the red mesh, so I'm going to pull it about six inches out from the wreath and cut it off. Then I'm going to take that tail and tuck it down into the wreath form, pull it to the back, and I'm going to use zip ties to attach it down. And I think I even pulled in the beginning piece of our mesh also and just went ahead and reattached it all, cut off that excess. And if you're afraid it's going to scratch your door, just put a little hot glue on top. I'm going to be attaching the blue mesh in the middle between the red. So the first thing I need to do is come in with some chenille stems. I'm going to use these gold ones so that you can see me. I'm going to bend them in half and then poke them through from the bottom over the middle two rings of the wreath form. Then I'll pull it to the front and tighten that down. Now I could have stopped here and went ahead and cut off the white ones. Should have done that, but I wanted to make sure I was finished and didn't want to attach anything else to the wreath form. So I'm going to work my way around and place a gold one everywhere where those center bar meets over the middle two wreath form rings. For the blue mesh, I'm going to start out the same way I did on the red. You want to gather it about four inches evenly from the end, bring it down, to your wreath form where you have your first set of gold chenille stems. I'm not even going to use a zip tie. I'm just going to go ahead and give it two hard twists down into the wreath form with the chenille stems. And then you're just going to measure over, again, 10 inch poofs each time. And then you'll bring the poof down to the next gold chenille stem, tighten it, and make sure that you fluff the mesh as you go. And we're just going to repeat that. And we only have to make six big poofs. And this is a good time to note something with you that I usually make my chenille stems match my mesh. In other words, I would have used red instead of white and blue instead of gold. But when you're making something on video, I want you to be able to see what I'm doing. And if I make them in the same color, it is very difficult. When you have contrast, you can see the steps. And when I finish with this step, I'm going to again bring it over, cut it off about six inches from my chenille stem, poke those ends down into the wreath form. Then I'll pull it to the back and I'm going to take a zip tie and I'm going to attach both ends. I'm going to pull them right across at that bar there and secure them well with a zip tie. And then we'll cut off that excess. And with that, the mesh is perfectly secure into the wreath form. The next thing I'm going to do is take those gold chenille stems and twist them several hard times and then I will come in and just cut them off with my wire cutters and poke them down into the wreath form and I'm going to do that for all of them. But here's an alternative. You can take a pencil and curl your chenille stems if they add beauty to your wreath and just leave them long but curled. But I don't think the gold adds to my wreath and my decoration, so I'm just going to go around and cut them all off with my wire cutters. And as for the white ones, I'm going to do the exact same thing. Just give them several hard twists, cut them off with my wire cutters, and, and then poke the cut edges down into the wreath form. You can also use a little hot glue on the back to make sure they don't scratch your door in any way. And with that, all of our mesh is attached to the wreath form. This is what it looks like so far. For this piece, we're going to be making two bows, same ribbons, and the bows are just a little different. I'm going to be using the Easy Bow Maker. I'm going to have seven inch tails on this first set of ribbon and four inch loops. 
two on each side. Just make sure you twist the ribbon each time when you come between the pegs and that will keep your bow uniform. The first ribbon was two and a half inches wide. The second ribbon is one and a half inches wide. I'm going to come in again with seven inch tails, but I'm only going to do three inch loops, two on each side. I'm going to use a zip tie and a chenille stem around our bow. First, I'm coming in with the zip tie. I will start tightening it while it is still on the bow maker. And then I will take it out of the bow maker, flip it onto the back. And before I tighten it completely, I'm going to place in this silver chenille stem at the back. And then I'll snug everything down and cut off the excess with my wire cutters. And of course, every bow needs a lot of fluffing. You need to dovetail the ends and adjust the length if needed. But once you pull everything out with that wired ribbon, it makes for a very pretty bow. For the second bow, we're going to again use the Easy Bow Maker. I'm going to start out with four inch tails and three inch loops. I'm going to do, first of all, a loop down and a tail down. Then I will come back in and do a tail up and a loop up. For our second ribbon, same thing. We're going to come in with four inch tails and three inch loops. We will start this time a tail up and a loop up and then a tail down and a loop down. You want it to be opposite from what you did with the first ribbon. Then we're going to come in with a zip tie and a chenille stem for this bow as well. We'll start it on the bow maker, start tightening it, take it out of the bow maker, place that chenille stem in the back, cinch everything tight, and then cut off the excess with our scissors or wire cutters. And then of course, you know, every bow needs a lot of fluffing and I do need to adjust those ends because I cut mine a little long. That's why I'm telling you to cut yours at four inches and you won't waste your ribbon. Let's get our items ready to attach to the wreath. For the sign, it has this nice hanger at the top and I'm going to use a chenille stem through the one already there. Then I'm going to come in with a cable tie mount on the bottom. I'll place in a chenille stem through the loops on the side, peel off the backing, and I'll reinforce it with some hot glue as well and place it down in the middle of the back of the frame. I'm going to use hot glue also on the side of my frame and I'm going to place on the little gnome. I want to make sure he's to the edge and doesn't cover up the word family. Then you just use the chenille stems to attach the frame to the right side of the wreath. You want to make sure that it sort of floats on top of your mesh, doesn't squish your mesh or go too far down in. So on the back, you need to make sure you twist them and um, that they're not too tight. The first bow that we made, I'm going to attach to the left side of the wreath, kind of in the middle, not quite, but I do want to have my tails hanging down onto the mesh. Make sure you twist your chenille stems around the wreath form, but again, don't sink it down into the mesh. You want it to kind of rest on top. For the second bow, I'm going to attach it to the top and kind of to the left-hand side of the frame. I'm going to push it down into the wreath form, of course, and then secure it on the back. Again, don't sink it in there. Just kind of let it rest on top. And then the only thing left to do is turn it on the back and make sure any chenille stems that haven't been cut, that you go ahead and twist them tight, cut them, and secure them further with hot glue. And with that, the project is complete. Thank you so much for watching today. If you saw something you liked, we hope you'll give us a big thumbs up. Leave us a comment and let us know what you think and if you have any suggestions. We just love hearing from y'all and it really does help our channel grow. We are also over on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, and Pinterest and would love it if you would click the link below and join us over there as well. If you enjoyed this episode, check out these videos for even more DIY inspiration. Bye, y'all.